today's lesson, we are reminded of God's ability to unite us with joy out of the pain and sorrow of divisions. Many barriers divided the Jews and Gentiles in the ancient world. Paul devotes much of his attention in this portion of the letter to the essential oneness of the church. For Jews and Gentiles alike, Paul explained that keeping the law was not a requirement for salvation. Christ is the fulfillment of the law, making it complete. Salvation cannot be earned through strict adherence to the law or by works. Nevertheless, we are not absolved of our responsibility to do what is right. Salvation by grace through faith does lead to good works. Thus, no one had the right to boast about personal goodness. There was no need for Jews and Gentiles to be divided based on Mosaic law. Christ became and remains the peace for all believers. Therefore, there is no need for division and discord. By lessening the significance of ethnic and cultural identity, both Jews and Gentiles gain something far better and greater. And that brings us to our key verse for today, which reads, We are carefully joined together in Him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 21. Devout Jews, in recognition of God's continuing covenant with Israel, faithfully practiced circumcision in the New Testament time. The practice raised a spirit of exclusivity and resentment between Jews and Gentiles, and later brought discord into the fellowship of the first century church. An exaggerated importance had been placed on the right, and each side called the other names. <laughs> Paul says, in essence, that the true motive behind the circumcision of the flesh is a circumcision of the heart that is spiritual instead of physical. That kind of circumcision is needed and available to both Jews and Gentiles alike. After describing the apparently gloomy and hopeless situation of the Gentiles before they became Christians, Paul now moves to the present positive state brought about by their new relationship in Christ. He says, you who once were far off, have been brought near. That means that they are no more aliens and strangers to the promises and covenant of God. They are no longer regarded as people without God and without hope. They now have the same close relationship with God, which was formerly reserved for Israel alone. In addition to the separating walls of the temple, the Jews always endeavored to live separate from the rest of the world and always wanted a river or wall between them and their Gentile neighbors. Their laws and customs also separated them from the rest of the world, as did the physical walls in the temple. These were symbols of hostility between the two. Christ, through his sacrificial death, fulfilled the law of Moses with its rituals, provided a new covenant that is inclusive for both Jews and Gentiles, and made them one. Verses 16 and 17 speak to the same theme using different terms. These terms further describe what Christ has done through his blood. He has reconciled both Jews and Gentiles unto God in one body by the cross. Verses 18 and 19 tell us the effect of Christ's preaching. Through him, Jews and Gentiles are now reconciled to one another and both to God. Consequently, by him, they both can approach God, the Father, in one spirit. It's noteworthy to recognize a reference to the Trinity here that reveals the distinctions of the three persons in the Godhead. Here, Paul reminds the Gentiles that through Christ, they have become fellow citizens with the saints, which means with Israel and God's own kingdom. And likewise, Paul assures them that they are also part of the temple of God. This is based on their union in Jesus Christ, who is the cornerstone. So here's our lesson. We know from scripture that God is so great that even the whole earth can't contain him, neither Solomon's magnificent temple, nor the one rebuilt by Herod. God does not dwell in man-made houses. He nonetheless manifested his glory and presence in the temple. However, he also makes his abode in the hearts of his followers. Now, some believers are determined to create cultural, racial, and ethnic barriers within the church. Many arguments and divisions have arisen over doctrinal issues. Some have attacked others as being unsaved for not adhering to certain standards. All believers should be careful to avoid ostracizing others. We should also be mindful of how what we do based on our preferences creates division. Christ desires that we engage ourselves in activities that draw us closer to Him and to 